number one news on the day, which just popped up on my feed. This is courtesy of Hot Dinners. It says Popeye's Chicken is coming to London, starting with Westfield Stratford. Cool, isn't it? Westfield Stratford is going to get a Popeye's Chicken. Absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously there was a big deal around um Popeye's, the big hype and hoopla last year or maybe a couple of years ago was the chicken sandwich that everyone was going crazy about and queuing. Remember all that nonsense? Like, I I, I kind of list the po people going crazy over Popeye's chicken sandwiches in the same sort of company as everyone kind of pretending that Ted Lasso is some, like, you know, um, amazing TV series, right? It's good enough. It's decent. It kind of allowed you to whittle away the day if you've got nothing else to do and you want to just waste some time and maybe laugh internally then Ted Lasso is a kind of thing for you. But people are pretending that it's anything like Curb Your Enthusiasm or whatever it may be, or it's some new thing, or people should care. Like, let's relax. The main guy in it, he's, you know, his missus got flipping, taken off of him from bloody Harry Styles. That's why people care about it, a little bit of sympathy. He's obviously really like a, a funny comedic actor or a good comedic actor, regardless, whatever, you put a good push, you put a good show together. And it is what it is. Same with the chicken sandwich. It Was it really that good that it warranted cues? It warranted people kind of having fights with flipping Popeye's chicken sandwich and um, workers. God bless them. Like all those really ridiculous videos. Like there was a time in my life where I was queuing for burgers, right? I, I'm not proud of it, but no, actually I am proud of it. That was a time when I was, I, I thought I was a food blogger. I forgot what I had. It was before my blog I had at the moment, the uh, default goon. Um, dot wordpress.com obviously no custom url on that one because i don't tell myself seriously but there's a time where i was like a quote-unquote food blogger i'd write these little reviews and sometimes you'd get little vouchers and you'd be invited to tasting sessions and shit and you know i'm sure if i would have kept at it the fact that i'm a token black guy would have definitely helped my career prospects but i didn't necessarily care too tough about it i've always kind of viewed food as like a fuel source i'm not really as much as I enjoy going to these nice places, I'm not. I wouldn't say a classical foodie in that I can lose myself in flipping um, turnips and you know certain kinds of onions or caramelization. I just don't care. I don't care enough for that. But I do remember a time where I cared deeply about burgers. This was a time when the whole burger tr trend had kind of seeped its way over to um, England. It might have been around the twenty. I don't know, 2015, 2013 era of time. But regardless of what it was, we'd go all around the country, all around London specifically, t tasting all these amazing burgers, popping up in different pubs, doing pop-up kitchens, which again was a great invention too, whoever started that. Um, it kind of allowed loads of bars and pubs to basically get a whole set of new clientele coming into your space. It gave them a destination to go to. You could then kind of recycle through with different people. You could become partners, whatever. Loads of things happened in the back of that. And that was actually a great thing because there's a lot of complexity 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 that goes into it regardless of what the word is in terms of the meat in terms of how it's constructed in terms of the buns in terms of how it's uh you know made barbecued whatever it may be and of course the people that we went to go see they've now become you know multi-millionaires off the back of those burgers right you think of people like uh meat liquor and these kind of establishments right absolutely smashing stuff and patty and bun all these kind of places um and of course pay people like five guys and all those big chains came over and essentially just took over the market but still facts remain um but i'll be interested to see what happens when popeye's chicken does open up in westford Stratford. will people queue up in the same way they did with all the other queues that happened in the states or people just move on because as great Popeye's chicken was when i went the first time i went to go taste Popeye's chicken was when we went to like a boys holiday my first and probably only boys holiday with more than like three people i'd say you call it that right a boys holiday is probably more than three people that was maybe what 2011 or something like that right um maybe 18 19 i think around there i think so and then um we went to a boys holiday to new york it was amazing one of the best ones um I kind of regret not kind of keeping in touch with all those guys. I miss them deeply, but unfortunately, you know, life got in the way. I couldn't be bothered to keep in contact. They made an effort definitely over the years, and I just didn't respond well to it. And, you know, everyone's kind of gone on their separate ways now. Unfortunately, we're all too old to kind of rekindle that sort of friendship in any kind of meaningful way. But still, one of the best trips ever. I, I ended up hooking up with one of the hottest girls I've ever hooked up with in my entire life at some hostel. I think it was called... Um, I think it was something like oh, it was what was it? It was like Metropolis or something like that. One one of those weird names, but I think it closed down because it wasn't fit for purpose. Uh, after we left, actually, um, it was like a ridiculously cheap hostel, like I don't know, twenty thirty dollars per night. And then, if I'm not mistaken, next door or underneath the hostel, there was this place or bar where you could buy where every 
pint you bought gave you a free pizza if you wanted it. And then in in order for, I guess if you want to add toppings, it was like a dollar on top for a toppings, but you just got a little seven inch cheese, uh, pizza, cheese and tomato pizza, which is fucking banging. And I think it was like a student bar sort of place, right? But a great concept. Um, you, you get a pint of beer and you get like a free pizza. So it's a good way, of course, for the bar too, to make sure no one's leaving too fucked up because then, you know, you got, you're, you're soaking up all the alcohol with those pizza. Um, but yeah, I ended up hooking up with one of the most hottest girls I hooked up with in my entire life at, at that, at, at, at from that hostel, she was an English girl, actually, ironically enough. And it was funny as well because there was two guys in the hostel that were, we were kind of competing for her kind of love or affection, attention. And it's cool that with dudes, for the most part, I'm not sure how it is with girls, but with dudes, we are quite like gracious, maybe to each other's faces, maybe behind the scenes, we're effing and blinding and, you know, sending evil vibes out to the other guy's way. But usually in front of each other, we're very good at kind of being gracious and be like, you know what, you bested me there. She obviously clearly likes you, I'll step away. And we're also aware of who the flipping favorite is, but we'll try anyway. I think that's really admirable as well because you never know, right? You might be the hotter dude. You might be the more compatible dude, but she might want something completely different. So you just try, you put your effort in anyway. And wherever she selects, again, women are always in control of these situations, no matter how much they try to feign, like, you know, that they're damsels in distress, really and truly. If a woman doesn't choose you, you're not getting no action. If she doesn't say yes, you're kind of going, you know, you're kind of going home with your balls in your hands. So um, she gracefully and thankfully said yes to me at that time, even though I had zero game at that age, um, I was still kind of like, whoa, I couldn't believe it was actually happening at the time. But it was such a kind of great experience, right, to experience that going over there, going to Supreme, going to places like, you know, Popeye's, buying a 40 ounce from a shop, from a bodega, sorry, going to Harlem and seeing all the Puerto Ricans. It was it was amazing. And I remember going to Popeye's for the first time. And I really enjoyed it, right? It was fucking fantastic. But again, at that time, food, culture, and kind of fried chicken spots in the UK weren't as good as what they had in America. But now we have quite a lot, especially in London, we have that Mother Clucker. I forgot what the other one was it's called as well. I think it's Cockfighter. We have another one. But there's a few chicken establishments that are doing really great work at the moment, right, here in London. And even KFC. Again, people like to scoff on KFC, but KFC is pretty decent, man. For what it is, like, for high street stuff, like, sim 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 don't get me wrong, it's maybe not a similar quality level or, like, standard consistency as what McDonald's is. Most McDonald's you go to around the world or even in the country, they're always going to be a 6 or 7 out of 10. <laughs> Solid, but I found with KFC and Burger King, they kind of, there's too much um, disparity between the consistency and the quality of and the, and the standard of quality between different restaurants. It's just too much. Like even where I live now, there's like two KFCs and half an hour from each other and the service and the level of stuff you get is way different from wherever you go, which is weird, but hey. But I do remember one thing for KFC was that the chicken portions of the tenders were so big because we're so used to having our tenders be like that size. Like, I don't know, like a, I don't know. How, what would you call that? Like the size of a, maybe a credit card or something. But then you go to America and their size of their tenders or their strips are like the size of two credit cards in length. And I remember getting that box meal one day. You know when you're on holiday and you, at the time I had I had some money because I was reselling loads of shoes. Um, I was doing that whole lark and a lot of the guys there didn't really have much money. So people were kind of scraping by, you know, helping each other out, lending people money, buying this, buying that. And the standard thing that we'd always do, because, you know, we, first time in America and we were playing young kids and our belly couldn't handle shit, we'd buy a meal and we just like, if you couldn't finish, you just give it to somebody else and they'd gracefully eat it. And I remember buying a box meal, standard meal, with like some, I think I got like gravy and some sort of mash or something. I forgot what I got and a nice drink. The drinks were amazing, of course. They got all these selections, way more than just, you know, Coke, Tango and Flipping Oasis. I think it was like seven or eight look, um, options. I remember eating that box, like a quarter of it, giving it to my friends and legitimately turning around and seeing like four people huddled around the box. That that meal managed to feed five people and it felt food, food meal really well. And it obviously gave them a little kick um, during the afternoon. We were just walking around the city, having a lot of fun and shit. And I remember leaving and thinking, wow, man, America's mad, isn't it? You could buy a box meal of that size and that could be enough to legitimately feed a family. It's absolutely insane. So I'm wondering if the level, if the kind of size and the, all that sort of stuff is going to be similar to what they have in the States. I guess not. No, it's not. It's no secret. But I thought that's what made it quite special. But I'm not sure if a, if a chicken burger is going to be that flipping, what's that thing called? I'm not sure if a chicken burger is going to be that mind blowing for us here in the UK, considering again how um, how much we've kind of upped the levels in our levels of kind of how much we've upped the levels, how much we've kind of improved in terms of our culinary options, 
and people also doing great fried chicken. I'm not sure if it's going to be the best, if it's going to be received as well as it should be, but we can only hope. It says here in the article, given Five Guys fairly massive rollout in the UK, it was only a matter of time before the US chain started to heading this way. We've already had the return of Wendy's and joined them soon as American Chicken, Juggernaut, Popeyes. The first London location, much like Wendy's before it, will be in Stratford, although Popeyes location will be in Westfield. They're also hoping to open 350 restaurants across the country. So let's hope the chicken shortage doesn't last long. Mad. It's also part of a big worldwide rollout uh, as the man in charge of the company beyond, um, behind Popeyes thinks they can be the biggest chicken player in the world so they're actually going for kfc that's interesting to see like i said from what i've had recently of kfc i had it what a couple of weeks ago and i i forgot how tasty it legitimately was especially like the box meals that they do with the gravy and whatnot like it's pretty decent um it's like what under a tenner i think it's like eight pound or nine pound or something fairly good value for money again if you order from a good one the quality is really good um if they can complete that would be flipping cool to see on the market because at the moment in terms of that level of chicken the only ones they're competing with are like the local boss mans right or like the what they called um the pepes and those kind of like off-key ones right um and those aren't really the best they were good when they first started i remember when they first popped up around um where i live in london they were really good they were a great little option and i don't know what happened to them maybe the, the stand the, the quality standards dropped new investors had to cut corners with their you know ingredients something happened and it wasn't as good as it was before but you know what can you do? It says here, yeah, Popeye started in Louisiana back in 1972 and currently has well over 3,000 restaurants. They've been particularly big in recent years um, when their chicken sandwich became an instant massive success selling out their restaurants across America. That's what something of a sensation where it lasted, but what about the rest of the menu? It looks like the surface of rather... Oh, it looks like on the surface rather than similar to another US chicken brand we can think of, but there are differences like Cajun flowered um, sandwiches while sides include mash and gravy and biscuits. Yeah, they love biscuits. I think that's what I got. I think I got mash gravy and biscuits out there. The American kind. We'll have more info on the menu when it gets closer to opening. So no no kind of news on the opening or where exactly Westfield's going to be or when it's going to open, but there is obviously a plan to open a Popeye's in Westfield, and that's going to be... Woo, that's going to be ram jammer, man. I think, I think people... I take it back. I think people in Westfield will love Popeye's, for sure. The kind of people that go to Popeye's in Westfield... I mean, Westfield in general to go eat and just shop around will definitely love it. 